Hello and welcome to the Idiot Book Nook. My name is Blazewing. My pronouns are they, them. My name's Lady Punnett. My pronouns are primarily she, her, sometimes they, them. Today is she, they. And I am Kurdishai. My pronouns are mostly she, her, sometimes they, them. Today's a her day. Last episode, we read Chapter 8 of Fame Has Its Price by the vampire Jack Townsend. But before we get into that, if you'd like to follow us on social media, you can do so at lanktr.ee slash idiotbooknook. You'll be able to find links to our podcast, to our YouTube, to our Twitch, and all of our individual projects on the net, and see what we're up to and follow us, uh, follow along with us on those. So, chapter eight. Chapter eight. The man in the suit. There was a yeah. fight. Mm, a big fight. We got introduced to Aiden. And Claude. Yeah. Claude we met last chapter. But we didn't yeah, know we his name. Now. Sorry, we didn't meet him last chapter. We ran into him again last chapter because we also met him yeah. when he was on the way in. That's true. Foster yeah. check. We just didn't have a name. Uh, um, uh, Aiden's got anger management issues, man. Oh, yeah. Like, shit, dude. Definitely, like... This is somebody like I get like we had a few different reasonings as to who he could have been last chapter, and y'all were right. He's uh, he's been sired by um, oh no, what's Alexander, his name? Alexander, yeah, Lamont? that's right. Um, so and apparently, there's a, supposed to be a process, or at the very least, there was a process for him. Uh, before being able to be made a vampire, and Alexander said, hold that beer. Nope. <laughs> yep. And for some reason, uh, Jack did not heed the warnings, and uh, but he's kicking ass. Yep. And I'm wondering if that's for... Um, so, depending on the vampire lore that you have... Um, Sometimes new vampires are not actually weaker. Mm -hmm. They're stronger because they're still like pumping full of human blood kind yeah. of deal. Um, so mm -hmm. I don't know if maybe that's why he's getting the upper hand or if it was just surprise. Um, and I loved that he included that he laughs when he's getting beat up and that that's how he disarms his bullies because that's what I do. Mm hmm. Um, I, when I'm in pain, I generally react by laughing. <laughs> so, yeah, and it, it actually really does dissuade people when you start laughing at them while they're trying to hurt you. I'm loving the fact that Jack snuck in a little bit of VTM lore in reference mm -hmm. to gifts. And then during the fight, we saw one specific instance where Aiden was beating up Claude and then suddenly Claude's skin started to turn to stone almost like he was using um, a fortitude ability from VTM. Mm -hmm. um, so the, from what I understand of Jack's background, the character Jack Townsend actually started off as a VTM, a Toreador VTM uh, yeah. character. Which is... No. Right, right. You don't not say. A Toreador. Um, I'm loving the fact that he's keeping some of that lore in place. And in Definitely. Place. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if if it was going to be like the cliffhanger thing where we never got to see Alexander coming in for this or <laughs> if it did what it did or if we, he would come in sooner. I was kind of hoping that he would that we would get a little bit more of his reaction um, and not get so cliffhangery. Um, I think it's the chapter was a tiny bit longer, but I do wish that they were a little bit beefier. Mm -hmm. I do agree. Uh, I think the chapters are fairly short. Uh, I do think that these chapters were. I don't. Mm, I don't think these chapters qualify as chapters. I think they qualify as scenes. And there is yeah, a, there is a definite difference between what constitutes a chapter as to what constitutes a scene. A chapter is more like you yeah. know, a small storyline within a larger storyline. 
mm-hmm. the scene is like okay. one specific moment in that uh, in that smaller storyline. Yeah, it's you know definitely. What, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me kind of of if someone was like filming for like TV episodes and it'd be mm. like, okay, this is where we're gonna go for like commercial break before we go back. It does have the distinct flavor of fanfic to it when you're when you're talking about the segmenting of the chapters in this book. A little mm. bit, and I mean that's not something that bothers me in general. Um, as as long as it's well written, I don't really care, you know, one way or another. Yeah. Um, and so far, this is fairly well written. And while it is short, uh, the information being given is concise. He doesn't wander off into weird topics. He it does stay on the topic that you're it stays in that moment agreed very mm-hmm. much which is not always easy to do so i mean that's definitely the nicer part um when compared to like the chapters being um short and as bliss uh blister beans in our chat mentions that makes sense considering the story started as visual media absolutely 100 percent. this did start as you know a TikTok thing it started as a storyline and now they're trying to readapt it into further forms of media i get that um mm-hmm. this very much feels like i guess arcs almost um yeah so like the little mini I- arcs this is just me making commentary on this like just kind of where my mind is at the moment when you're talking about the way you segment chapters we're on chapter eight right now we've had kind of an introduction to the character we've had an introduction to alexander lamont we've had an introduction to aiden and claude uh we've been reintroduced to jack as uh, a vampire the way i would have framed this is everything up to the first night would have been one chapter yeah i agree um everything Mm -hmm. up to uh everything that happened during the first night would have been chapter two up until jack turned you know that 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 fateful night until he was embraced and then everything after that so far would be chapter three yeah i agree and i was that's actually what i was going to say at next is like in a larger format or how I would have placed it would definitely have been like two to like everything that we've read so far is split into two or three chapters. And instead, um, I, I read a lot of books, mm-hmm. a lot of big books. Um, and generally speaking, when there's chapters like that, where multiple things are, are like, you're having multiple moments in time that are not right next to each other or things like that um they just you know put like a little bit of spacing within the chapter just like different sections Mm -hmm. within the chapter i would have probably framed it like that so that there's a clear like okay we're in a different spot in time now but we're still within that same chapter like we're still within that same category i don't know I find those breaks are actually very important because it helps distinguish between scenes. And it, yeah. if it's not like extremely obvious, like you move from say indoors uh, in your house to indoors in a nightclub, that is extremely obvious that it's a different scene. But if you move indoors from your house in the, say the bedroom to indoors in your house, downstairs in the rec room, um, it may not be overly obvious that that's supposed to be a new scene. Those breaks do help. Yeah, they, they they really do. Um, so I think this could probably have benefited from that. But then again, um, from what I understand, this is a multi-series yes. book. This um, is going to be a series. He's actually working yeah. on book two right now. Yeah. And generally speaking, I find with a lot of books like this, especially when it comes to fiction, um, the first books always seem to be very short. It's, it's like the safe launching pad to see if like people are gonna get hooked on it. And I think generally from my understanding, what happens is they, these books usually start out a lot bigger, but it's the publishing houses who are like, no, you gotta cut that in half. That's too long. Nobody's gonna read it, which I think is bullshit. Cause I'm like, please give me big ass books, like big books and a lot of them, please. <laughs> so like when, when I consume media like that, like I'm very voracious. Um, (laughs) so definitely I'm enjoying that things are really moving forward. We're getting names to faces. 
or establishing some kind of pecking order. Mm -hmm. um, because it seems that even though I mean, what's the Adam made himself sound like what's what do you call it? Like the left hand or whatever. Yeah. Like he, he referred to himself as the hound. Yeah. So there's definitely like a lot more to their structure than Jack has been shown so far. And he probably should have stayed the fuck in his room. <laughs> Comment from uh, from our audience. I like big books and I cannot lie. You're, you're not true. wrong. You are not wrong. Um, Absolutely. There is, and there is something to be said for like holding the actual book in your hands. This is probably a, a book that I will pick up. Like I have the digital copy. I will probably look at picking up maybe the physical media mm -hmm. um, and adding it to my shelf because that desperately needs to be done. Yeah. For those of you that haven't seen my shelf, for those of you that are watching the video and haven't seen my shelf. Ah, oh, shit. Bird. Yeah. What are your thoughts? What's the uh, bird lady? doing what are your now? Thoughts, lady I don't know. I'm sending someone to look. Um, so overall, I did like the structure of this uh, chapter. I liked the fight scene. I liked how it showed like the different things. I also liked the characterizations we got of each of these characters, even though... I would say this is a great example of show don't tell. Yes, so, absolutely. Right off the bat, we can tell that uh, Aiden, I think his name was the the yeah the the douche, thinks very Jack's highly new of himself. Jack's new brother thinks barely highly of himself. He has very much only child syndrome. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. He's like, what do you mean you got turned after a day? Yeah. Because he said, and like, just, trials and everything else, like, so. And he's so pissed off, just done. And then we have Claude, on the other hand, who we can tell. He says point blank, like, look, I can't beat you, but I can make it so you can't work for a week. And we both know Lamont's not going to like that. Yeah. And it's very, it, he wasn't giving off, like, protector vibes. It was more like, listen, I can see where this is going. I know you. You're going to make this a big deal. And it's going to make me have to clean it up. I don't want to do that. And you're starting to tick me off. So shut up before this becomes a thing. And then we get Jack. Who shows interesting characterizations. With like you said. With how he laughs. At the friggin whole fighting thing. And also shows a bit of his writer's side. With this whole comment on like. You said oh, it yeah. wrong. It didn't. You didn't land right. I love you make it that. sound like you're fucking orphans. And it's just like, yes. Yes. Give me more of that. Give me that's more sassy. of showing your your sassy writer side. Give me more of that. Because I can be completely honest. I am a sucker for someone who has a very good sense of like wit when it comes to like grammar and sentence structures. Well, I mean, heck, look at my username. My username literally Lady Punnett. Because I love wordplay. It is my favorite form of comedy. Um, Absolutely. It's just... That was very... It was clever, but it wasn't forced. It wasn't forced. It felt very, like... You, you can tell when someone tries to shoehorn a sentence in, and he was all like, yeah, no, I saw what you did there. I, I see the attempt. It just didn't land right, my dude. Yeah, or like when you see it coming like a mile away, whereas yeah. this was... I didn't I see it coming. I can't you in a day. I, I did not see the line coming about the fucking orphans thing. Like, I got the reference when he said the first time, like, fucking orphan Annie. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense because it's about Annie and orphans. And then the whole fucking orphans line, like, oh my god. Yeah, no, that was definitely well played. In the meantime... And the other thing... Sorry, go ahead. Oh. Finish your thought. No. And, the, and the other thing that I really liked was... And we've already seen bits of this. Um, how Jack doesn't like bullies. Mm. Um, we've seen that with his father. We got hints of it with his whole, like, growing up with his one friend bit. And, like, looking out for one another. But then he said a ten he felt a tenant come true. And he doesn't like bullies. And he saw what... Aiden was doing to Claude, picking on someone who is obviously much weaker than him and getting joy out of it. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, fuck that. 
I know you're stronger than me, probably. You might be a few hundred years old, but that's not going to fly with me, buddy. And just that, bam. And that ties right back into the whole character tenants from VTM. That being yeah. said, mm -hmm. uh, we for those of you that are watching the video, we've had a redemption in chat for Bombs Away, our second one this morning. I can't do two in a day, though. It, like, burns my mouth for real. Last time I did that, my tongue peeled for over a weekend. Oh. But I can grab, like, a little sour candy or something. Or we can save it for next week. Or and I can, then I'll have I can look into refunding you the points. That's a good point. Do you want her to save it for next week, or do you want your points refunded? Or do you want something a little weaker? Yeah. Do you want something a little weaker? Those are your three options. Yeah, no, you're, okay. you're good, Bliss. You're good. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. It no, happens. It health, health comes first. Yep. Like, it's why, for example, I can't have the spicy chicken uh, ramen at my bubble tea place anymore because mm. it makes my tummy do weird things yeah, afterwards. No, we, don't like we don't like it when the, the, the spicy ramen makes our tummy do weird things afterwards. So that's why we're just going to like shelf spicy ramen for the time being. Anyways, while we're waiting for that, uh, probably won't be here next week. Okay, so then I can look into refunding your points if you want. I can give those back to you. It's not a big deal. So what else have we got for this book or for this chapter? We're getting so if we go back to aid in a bit, um, his characterization so I recently started watching Demon Slayer with my friends. This has a point. And for those of you who watch Demon Slayer, there's these two demon characters. One's a doctor and the other's like her guard aide. He's giving me very much vibes of that where he's very much like, I'm the only one that could spend time with him. He's my person. You mean nothing. He feels very entitled to Alexander's being. Yeah. Which... We often see with, so in VTM lore, that actually happens quite often with those who are ghoulified. And sometimes if you have like a strong relationship with your sire, because more often than not, typically uh, sires and their people who they turn into kindred don't always get along. Yeah, there's it, it can go either one way, like lifelong forever can't separate the two or like you know like the kind of like i haven't seen you in 400 years but it's like we were having coffee yesterday or there's the i absolutely loathe their existence how dare they just be <laughs> yes so, so i'm getting very much the whole like this is my person i am the only one that matters to him you mean nothing to him you are a fling in the night yeah, it, it the I gotta say like the line about like acting like a jilted twelve year old, it is very bang on. I would say it is. It it, it really is. It's oh, I just it realized gives, what like, that reminds. Oh, go ahead. Well, so blended families mm. where you have like two children that are roughly the same age, and you find out you have to share your parent with them but you're introduced in a way that's kind of the parents' fault where it's like, hey, honey, guess what? We're moving in together with my boyfriend who you've only met like five times and he has a kid your age. Moving in next week. Hey, look, it's your like, you know, childhood bully or some shit. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This is your childhood bully. Guess what? They're going to be your sister and you're sharing a room. <laughs> it gives me that. And it's like, yeah. it just proves even further. like. Alexander, you dropped the ball on this. You, you should have. You should have just stayed around, or at the very least, like had Claude stayed there and be like, "Hey, you got to stay here. There's someone yeah. downstairs you do not want to meet." Well, I mean, it does look so. Like Claude did say that Aiden had been away, and we don't know for how long. Um, yeah. So it's either one of those like. Alexander tried to like pull a fast one and he was hoping he could like get over like maybe he like knew that no matter 
how it seems like no matter how he would have broached the subject, Aiden would have been unhappy. I'm I'm seeing no matter what, there would have been some kind of hissy fit. He gives like spoiled trophy wife vibes. You know, like if she doesn't get what she wants, she's gonna throw shit at you. And it kind of seems like he was hoping to just like sneak it the hard part by and be like, it's already done. There's nothing you can do about it. Ha ha. You know, like better to ask forgiveness than to ask for permission or some shit. <laughs> I feel like oh, and, and just Aiden just came home too early. <laughs> Jack's the mistress. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much so yeah um and he you know what he probably shouldn't have left at all he should have stayed he should have known better <laughs> he should have known better yeah but now he comes back and like his two protégés are fighting and his bartender is unconscious on the floor and his oldest is like beating up the new guy and he's not happy and i'm honestly Part of me is thinking what's going to happen is, well, first of all, we know Aiden's going to get in a lot of trouble because I'd like to think Alexander is smart enough to know that Jack isn't strong enough to beat up Aiden or not strong enough to beat up Claude. Yeah. And knows Aiden's temper. Oh, yeah. I think think he'll be able to put two and two together pretty fucking quickly. Um. (laughs) Yeah. And it was it, it was fun to use some of my big voice to do that one. By the way, for those in the chat who are like, ooh, mama voice, uh, that is a fraction of what I'm technically capable of. Uh, but th- there were people sleeping in the house, and I didn't want to scare the shit out of everyone because yeah. I've got those loud French pipes. We also don't <laughs> scream here on the channel for the most part um, yeah. for fear of, you know, blowing out your eardrums. At exactly. At the same time... Clipping the audio like that generally doesn't work well. If you hear mm-hmm. it on the editing end of things, like... Yeah, so... But just know, I can do better. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's... I'm definitely... While the chapters are short, they do leave off in a point where you want to read the next one right away. Mm-hmm. So I am very okay. much looking forward to what happens next. And what kind of angry sire smackdown we're going to be in for. Uh, I just hope it's a good smackdown. Likewise, I am actually really looking forward to the next chapter. Uh, I can't wait to see what happens. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this read through. So. Mm-hmm. It's a good read through. Um, Aiden gives will burn your clothes in the front yard energy. And yeah. Aiden says, sorry for even mentioning or saying this, but Critter showing her dominant mom's side. Say nothing. Oh, not. Um, no. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So okay. it does give those vibes, and it's very much a like. Well, even in the last chapter, I'd like to think Claude had an idea of what was going to happen. Because he was all like, hey! So he decided to let you stay. That's great. Welcome to the club. Yeah. Um, and then Aiden overheard. And it was just like, no. Yeah, I feel like Claude could have Claude should have maybe been like, oh hey, I'll be right back and like ran the fuck across the room, be like, you need to go this way. This way, my dude. Not safe yet. You gotta wait <laughs> yeah. for the boss. You know, um and definitely the whole like, eh, you know, it was only on a need to know basis. <laughs> the need to know. You weren't in the need or to know. Oof. Yeah, so but it's definitely <laughs> his first couple hours as a vampire are off to a bit of a rocky start. You know, agreed. Yeah, yeah. As one does, rather. Sorry, I was muted. Um, 
it always takes some time to figure out kind of, I guess, where your new abilities lie or yeah. kind of what that transformation has gotten in store for you. It seems to be a running trope throughout every vampire, every piece of vampire media. I True. Mm -hmm. um, I do like that it's just, it's also kind of given him like a little bit of a kick in the butt in terms of like, hit, like he says it like he feels courage. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, like, oh, he's essentially he's faced death is how he's viewing it. And yep. well, at that point, well, there's nothing to fear. I have different thoughts on that. And I'm sure he'll find out later that it's not that simple. But <laughs> um, at the very least, I think it's I think Aiden was expecting a quiet little puppet. Yeah. And to have Jack bite back is actually probably going to be a good thing. It almost seems like Aiden was expecting somebody much weaker, which leans into kind of the newer the vampire, the weaker they are. And then Jack mm -hmm. turns around and like... Uh, Just wallops know, him. I, I don't know how quite to describe that. I wouldn't use the word wallop, but Jack turns around and basically says, get fucked. Oh, yeah. So. On that note, I think this is a good place to end this... Uh, to end this episode yeah um, mm -hmm. hope i you think guys have covered the everything discussion. um want to thank you for joining us if you'd like to follow us on social media you can do so at l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash idiot book milk you'll be able to find links to our podcast to our youtube to our twitch and all of our individual projects on the net and you'll be able to follow us and see what we're up to but for this episode of the idiot book milk i'm blaze wing i'm lady punnett and i'm critter shy and we'll see you guys next episode. Bye. Bye.